I want to remind everybody that this hero right here, I did not think that was going to happen at all. But what I'm going to be doing here for you guys is breaking down 23 things that I did spot from this new trailer that you might have missed. Some Easter eggs, a breakdown of what's really different from this design to the past one. Even story plot points that look like they have changed from the original cut. So be sure you're dropping a like down below because they did this for the fans. God damn, you better appreciate it. Alright, so one of the very first things were so detailed in this environment and the way it looked but made Sonic look like this. So they went ahead and did a lot more fan service that I'm going to point out here to make people really happy and make it feel like this was made by actual Sonic the Hedgehog fans. Breaking it down right away, a lot of things have changed with this Sonic the Hedgehog design. Starting off from bottom to top, we have the shoes are completely changed. Now the original Sonic the Hedgehog movie that was supposed to come out last week, they had a sponsorship deal with Puma and Sonic was going to be wearing Pumas. Apparently there was a line in the movie that said these were the best shoes that that didn't wear out on him because if you remember in the past trailer there's a shot of a pile of broken down shoes that he's just rubbed out and the puma shoes the sponsorship was the only shoes that sonic could wear unfortunately after the redesign it looks like they went ahead and canned that it is unknown if it was paramount's decision or if puma just pulled out because it's like oh we don't want to be known with this ugly looking thing you make your own shoes so as far as i know these are no name brand shoes but they do have the sock tip leg warmers at the top the classic one white strip they they even have the gold buckle on either side moving it up from there one of the important things that they changed is the body proportions because that's what was the main problem as an eyesore to the original design is that the body proportions look like a man in a suit they went ahead and completely reshaped it made his legs arms and belly shorter and that completely works out with the design moving more up to his actual belly in the original design that was more of a gray color they've changed it now to be a tan color to match with his mouth which I don't know why in the redesign that was a problem in the beginning another thing we don't catch here but that will be shown later they even shrink the teeth down because the teeth in the old trailer were gigantic the size of human teeth here they are so hidden where they're barely visible when sonic smiles and talks so this is the best thing where they're there but they're not too obvious where they don't stand out in your face along with the nose is also shrunken looks like sonic definitely got himself some plastic surgery the mouth area where it's tan is a lot more round the mouth is also a lot wider the eyes are also made bigger and more green this is like cartoon character 101 because if you make something with small eyes that's an indication in your brain that the thing you're staring at is ugly mean threatening and to give it oversized bulging eyes triggers your mind to think that this is a happy friendly being which is why the avatar creatures also have gigantic eyes it's a trick Hollywood uses, which is also why I believe they paid no attention to the first design. This Sonic is also wearing gloves. I think it's an easy thing that they're going to go ahead and explain this movie. He's a hedgehog. Hedgehogs have quills. Quills hurt people and spike them out. So it's an easy fix. I wear gloves so I don't hurt you, man. One thing to notice, the detail on this glove is pretty nice. You can see the cloth and cotton coming off of them. And the last thing I'm going to point out here is the head shape of Sonic, specifically the back end with his spiky quills. Looks a lot better. The previous Sonic almost looks like he was rocking a mullet. Proportion was the key in this design and they did it well. Getting back to the trailer and the actual footage that we were shown, so Sonic will be traveling to our world via the rings. We know in the video game these were used as life support for Sonic, but in the movie they they will be used as transportation devices for him to travel all around. If you watch the trailer, Sonic goes to Paris. You see it here on the bus. He goes to the Great Wall of China, so in China. He's obviously in America in the beginning, at one point even in Egypt. So this device is very crucial for Sonic the Hedgehog to get around to where he needs to, even though he's super fast and could probably get to these places without it. Before getting into more shots in here, if you listen to the trailer, it looks like the modem of Sonic has changed in this movie. In the original trailer, it was said he came to our planet to help save it because something bad was going to happen. In this trailer, that tune has changed and Sonic says he comes to our planet because something bad was in his planet. Again, this is why I believe that Sonic the Hedgehog level at the very beginning of the trailer was completely remade for the redesign to please some fans. And along with that, they had to change a little bit of the story. Also begs the question, who is this big bad guy that Sonic is running away from from his planet? Because he's unaware of Dr. Robotnik up until he meets him in this adventure that he's going to have in the movie. So they're definitely going to set up a potential 
potential sequel here from the bad guy that's coming from Sonic's world. When we get to Sonic in his man cave here, the first issue he is reading is of The Flash. This is a comic book from 1980 called Flash Brand New Beginning, issue 285. The plot synopsis for this issue of the comic book reads, Barry moves into Utopia Towers, an apartment complex for singles, Flash battles the trickster, and it's the first appearance of future Flash. Whenever movies throw in little Easter eggs like that, it is no mistake if the camera lingers on to it, it is always some sort of Easter egg or hint, and this very much fits in line with what is happening to Sonic in this world. He moves into a new location, is single by himself, and it's the first appearance of one of the Flash's enemies, also the first appearance of Dr. Robotnik to him. That's a sweet, nice little Easter egg that was thrown in there. Something funny, though, about this issue, the back of it has an ad from O.J. Simpson. Yeah, that's right. The guy famous from the show How to Get Away with Murder. I mean, the football player. He had an ad at the back of this issue, and if you look, it looks like someone has already torn it off. Because you can't have O.J. Simpson in a Sonic trailer, okay? They're trying to stay away from controversies. From there, we see Sonic continue to play on in his bachelor pad. One of the signs, though, that is a street sign is a name of one of his levels called Hilltop Road. This level first appeared in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and that's also funny because in the first trailer, they shown Green Hill Zone, which was the first level in the first Sonic video game. And now that we got a second trailer, and this is the second attempt to make Sonic right, we got level two in the second video game. We bashed these people for the first design, but they're really putting in these Easter eggs for the fans, and I'm loving it. Speaking of which, another great Easter egg that they threw in there, Sonic, when he is holding the nunchucks and wearing that headband, it contains the logo that you see when you start up the Sonic the Hedgehog video game. That made me smile when I first saw it. Absolutely wonderful wonderful. All you're missing is Sonic right there planted on, but I guess that would be too meta. It would have been hilarious if they put the old design on that bandana just as a little giggle for fans. When we move forward in the trailer, obviously if you were paying attention during the baseball scene, they play some of the classics on the Hedgehog video game music. Something different that we see here that we didn't get in the previous trailer. So this shot is familiar to us from the last trailer, except Sonic was not holding this ring. Again, that is the transportation device for him in this movie. And in his other hand, it looks like he's holding a brown sack where he keeps the ring so maybe he has multiple of these transportation devices. Even though the main plot of this movie is that Dr. Robotnik wants a quill from Sonic's head to make a clone of him or just harness his powers, once he discovers these transportation rings, that might be the greater invention that Dr. Robotnik would want to get his hands on. Because later in this trailer, when he's running away from the Great Wall of China, he is holding that sack around his body, running away from Dr. Robotnik. And that, to me, screams classic Sonic, saving his rings. There's got to be a scene where he gets knocked and the rings fly everywhere. Another interesting thing to point out here that is not related to the Sonic video game, the Sonic lore, but looks like it's going to be a running joke in this Sonic movie. This Sonic has a fetish fetish for things that are ball shaped. If you look at the beginning of the trailer, Sonic has balls of all shapes and sizes, and then later on in the trailer, he gets super excited about the world's largest rubber band ball, and even takes everything ball shaped from the souvenir shop to bring back to his collection. So this could just be a little nod towards Sonic turning into a ball and doing that, and then his direct fetish to that. But all right, man, you gave us a great Sonic redesign. If you give Sonic a ball fetish, I'm gonna forgive you. From there, one of the last things we notice here is Sonic going essentially supersonic. Now in the video game, Sonic goes super a very different way with all the Chaos Emeralds. Those look to be absent in this movie and it's more focused on actually getting their hands on Sonic or his transportation rings. And this movie's version of supersonic, he will remain the same color. It does not look like he'll go gold. Again, they could just be hiding the visual effects on that and saving it for the actual movie. I would prefer that he gets his hands on some sort of Chaos Emerald or anything to give him a power boost because if not this just feels like Sonic going Super Saiyan. Either way though this is the most beautiful shot of the trailer. The VFX look absolutely fantastic because I mean as a quick mention this poster was just released so it's proving that all the past leaks that we got on this channel were absolutely correct but one thing I want to point out from this poster Jim Carrey look familiar to you guys? Looks really familiar to me. <sighs> May you rest in peace man. Jim Carrey paying tribute to the legend. So anyways guys, those are just 23 things I caught from the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer that you might have missed. If there's anything I missed that you guys caught, go ahead and leave it down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3CFilmReview. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.